right, well, I'm a little bit early this evening, but um, if you're familiar with us at all, you know a little something about our past woes with going live. So if you haven't joined us yet, that's okay. I'm just here. I'm live whenever people join us. And welcome to the Velveteen Lounge Kitchen. Um, hope you're having a great week. This has been a very weird week, I think, for us here. When the week started, it was freezing cold. Oh, hi, Loris. I, You know what? You're so far away, but by now I actually recognize your avatar. So hi. Uh, thank you. Also, Julie. Hi, Julie. Thank you for joining us. We went live a little bit early, just, um, you know, past YouTube woes. Just wanted to make sure everything was kosher. So here we are with no music, but um, if you've downloaded our Spotify, well, I guess you don't download it. You just go to Spotify and listen. But anyway, there's a playlist, so if anyone wants music, they can actually have it. Um, music and is nice. Here's Paul. Oh, yes, here's. Oh, hey. oh, it's me. Ah. Yes, it's Paul. <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah, well, so. music is nice. Obviously, there are issues with copyright, which I respect. So yes. if you can do it otherwise, fine. I could always just tell you, choose this album and start it playing at, you know, 0. 0.59 and away you go. But some of the albums we choose are so weird that people couldn't find them even if they wanted to. Not nope. the ones on the playlist. The ones on the playlist are classics, but we find some that aren't There's a couple classics. I could name that forget it. But then again, <laughs> these days, every time I'm going looking for something, I think, is that up on YouTube? Yes, it's up on YouTube. Somebody posted it. That's true. There's, like a, there's a billion people posting things every day i'm thinking of oh you know what it's probably not over there because you switched out all the records but yeah. tom mohide we can say its name now because we're not playing it that's true there's a record that we would play before we got really worried about this that was a ballroom dance record like a ballroom dance class record mm -hmm. the cover of it was hysterical i have to find it um and show it to we you will know, it was this couple dancing who i guess was the guy from the record tom himself but, yes but there was this little boy just sitting there watching them like what? Anyway, it, was, it was really funny never mind yeah. it's funnier if you can see it yeah well so much for that time Gary. to make drinks but I, I will tell you you probably are familiar <laughs> with that music if i played it for you oh i've heard you know, that, I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i heard that like five times many times yeah so anyway um drinks i'll check conference. yes paul and i are doing different things tonight um Hey, hello to Primo. Hi, thank you for joining us. Hello to Kate. Hi. Oh, Kate says I promise I'm going to send you the Malort. Oh my gosh. Malort. Yes, that would be awesome. I would love to do a live episode with Malort. Oh, listen, that would be hilarious. We can't do the sampling because we've already done that, but we'll mix with that. <laughs> and then everybody who's familiar with the product will go, we were oh my. In Cleveland, <laughs> we tried Malort. And the, the funny thing is, we were at Porco yeah. Tiki Lounge, or Porco Lounge and Tiki Bar. Correct. It's called. And, um, they're like, oh, the wall of pain. They gave us samples from the wall of pain, and Paul and I are like, hmm, tastes pretty good. <laughs> so. As bitters go, or as, as bitter items go, yeah. I'm familiar with um, things. Amaro. Amari. Yeah, Amari, you know, Amari. quite frankly, which which that's kind of in that category. <laughs> it's not exactly. But it works the same way, and i got to say, that is far from the most astringent thing I've tried. I think that Rebarbaro is, is considerably more. Mm. And we've got that behind the bar right here. I know, and I tried that, I'm like, mm, tastes good. Interesting. I mean, frankly, even, <laughs> even Chinar itself is pretty bitter, yeah. and, you know. Not as bitter as Rebarbaro. No. And I know that Mullard is sort of a dare shot. It's like, you know, your manly men, you take a shot of it. Oh, I can take it. But, you know, mixing with it? Yeah, I can mix with it. I, oh, sure. no, I, I, I want to I wanna do this. So, anyway, um, Rajiv tonight. Says hi. Hi. Hello, Rajiv. Andrew, listening to the playlist. Oh, it works. Oh, good. Thank you. I'm glad someone's actually benefiting. And so do, so do Larissa and Jilly. Awesome. Thank you. I'll add more to it. We were kind of in a hurry, so I put Which is some things. Jason but, um, says happy Thursday. Patrick says hello, 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 Thursday. Patrick. Oh, thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Um, oh, and, and would you recommend using Malort as a bitters? Yeah, actually. You could do it, that, yeah. It's, it's the, what's making it bitter? Yeah. Yeah, yeah don't. <laughs> try some drops first. You don't first. want to overpour on the Malort. But, try some oh. drops first and see what happens, you know? But, it, yeah, you could definitely use that as bitters. Sure. Um, yeah, it. get an eyedropper. That's a, a trick we learned a long time ago. If you just go to the drugstore and get an eyedropper, you can just put in drop by drop yeah. these things. And, so you can yeah. really control what's going in exactly. because there are some things you can overpour and, well, that's the end of the story. Well, there are some things like Pernell or something yeah. that, you know, you use a quarter ounce and it dominates your entire it's drink. It's a very so. strong flavor. If you like it, 
It's a very strong profile, and quite frankly, there are all sorts of Perno and absinthe drinks that are all based around that profile, yeah. and you go with that. But it dominates, so you have to care, be careful. Something like what was it? The, the classic. I'm still standing here holding this bottle here, like an idiot. Holding this bottle. You're, you're, not holding, you're holding it like to be okay. Look, there are certain like classics from Don Beach. I think his his stunt was like six drops worth of that. Yeah. So frankly, I would do that with a Malort. Is like yeah, start with like two drops, see what happens. Uh, just like cooking, taste. Try, taste, try, taste, try. Uh, any of you cooks out there? You've got Patrick, you've got Larice. Taste along the way. Yes, definitely. Always sample. Yeah. See how it is. Absolutely. Same with cocktails. So, young miss, what do you have so for us? So, I have, it's, I'm going to show you how down this bottle is. Depressingly down. But um, we bought this bottle, which I never would have thought to pick up, of Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey Liqueur. And we picked it up when we did our episode at Devitt's Nursery, where we, went, where we right. saw Egbert. Egbert. talking Christmas egg mm -hmm. and Egbert's eggnog called for eggnog and this and we thought oh okay so we got it and we tried it and I didn't have high hopes and we tried to sample it it's pretty darn good it's got a nice flavor it's profile. not bad at all it's it's an awful lot like what, what is the the scotch with honey that's a drum buoy yes yeah yeah it's, yeah. it's, it's got a yeah it's, it's really pretty it's good. got a very distinct honey flavor I don't think they faked that and it's got Jack Daniels. And easily so. available. I, I'm trying to use ingredients that people can that? actually get. So, um, and really, or look, make at home. Look, Jack Daniels sells this stuff, so you just pour some in a glass and drink it straight. Sure, why not? Yeah. But as a mixer, hey. Yeah. So I thought I will, I'll try this. it in some cocktails, and and we'll see. Let's see. And what are you doing this evening? Well, I when I was recently at the supermarket, I think it was a Hispanic market, which has a lot of fun stuff. Oh, Check yeah. out your local Hispanic market. Found La Fe Tamarind Juice Drink. Juice Drink. Now, Juice Drink is, <laughs> yeah, it's got a lot of water and sugar in it. But actually, it doesn't have any of the, you know, suspect sugars. And if it's got a nice tamarind flavor and sweetened properly, this should be a good mixer. Well, and you haven't opened it yet, so we don't actually know. We'll have to try it out. What it tastes like. So Front anyway, and center. I'm going to start. Why don't you? So I think I, what I think I'll do is I'll just make the same cocktail, but change the base liquor. Now this is part of the fun. So yeah, so we'll see what we think. So I'm going to start with tequila. Uh -huh. I have, have not tried this yet. And why would you start with tequila? Because I love tequila. Well, there you go. So anyway, <laughs> I'm going to start with two ounces of tequila. Marie says I want to sign when I my playlist. <laughs> I need to add more to it. Jen says hello. Hi, hello Jen. thank you for joining us. So, oh, I forgot to get any bitters out. Oops. Oh well, you know I got so, I got some. All right. Out. So I did two ounces of. We're liking bitters. Um, why don't you grab the orange? Orange is always good orange. to have. We've more than uh, one. But we have an orange. That's, that's it. perfect. Oh, yep. do we? Okay, perfect. No more orange. All right. What? <laughs> anyway. No. So I did two ounces of reposado tequila. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to add a half ounce of the Tennessee Honey Liqueur. Which Reposado did you use? I used Familia Camarena. Camarena. Which is like almost out, but... This is an Olegave tequila. It's really, that is usually yeah, found at a very good price, so I recommend it. Definitely. And, and it's got a nice flavor profile. It, you know, Reposado has been sitting in a barrel for probably about six months. So I'm adding a half ounce of fresh lime juice. So it was two ounces of tequila. Use whatever tequila you like, but I used Reposado. Mm -hmm. um, half ounce of Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey Liqueur. Half ounce of fresh lime juice. And I'm going to add a few dashes of orange bitters. And... <laughs> Woo! All right. I don't have a glass, do I? Nope. I glass. All right. Ooh, I'm already sticky. So early in the podcast. Doesn't that happen? <laughs> Life, folks. All right. Oh, nice frosty glass from the. Oh, the Team Lounge Kitchen. Uh, oh, oh, hello. Hello. oh, so that's going to taste forty percent better. It will. Of course, it never always changes. Sometimes it's forty percent. Sometimes it's seventy percent. It depends on the cocktail. Let's see what we think of this, folks. If you drink cocktails and you don't have one of these glasses, check it out in our store. Easily had. What do you think, eh? So you mixed base liquors, which people usually don't do. Well, people mix base liquors, but tequila well, it's a liqueur. and and the whiskey, interesting. But it's it's a whiskey liqueur. You know, at first I didn't think I was getting the the honey, but now I think I am. Okay. Because it doesn't taste like tequila really anymore. Something has changed a bit about yeah, that. Yeah, I'm getting really all those flavors. Yeah, interesting. I I'm, yeah. I like that. I I'll drink that. I'll drink to that. 
there's a way in which that works as a sort of a margarita variation mm -hmm. because you've got all of those flavors in there, including the orange from the bitters. Yeah. But you didn't add liqueur, so it doesn't. It, you didn't kick up the sweetness. I'm going to make another drink, but I'm going to put the cap on this because it's kind of crowded back here. A little crowded. I'd, I'd hate to see it. Well, hit you want to hand me that thing because that's that's done. Oh, are you taking? Are you busing? I can bus. Oh, all right. Thank you for busing. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so is it you. your turn or should I make another? Uh, well, you're on a roll, I guess. All right, yeah. well, I need another shake. I, I had this strange urge to put music on, but I can't do that. Ah! <laughs> I can't do that because I can't do that, and also because people are listening to music. They're doing just fine. All right, you have to work on this, though, because okay, well, I'll drink it all by myself. Twist my arm. Okay, so I am going to do the same thing, but instead of using tequila, I'm going to use... Dark, dark rum. rum. And which dark rum are you using? I'm using Karuba. If you can get it, excellent choice. It's a it's a good one for the price for sure. Yeah. So I, I usually find that Myers, which you can find almost anywhere in the country, I would say, it, yeah. it's a great rum. I love Myers. Is priced up. It's it's very. It's really expensive. Part about it for what yeah. it is. I mean, it's a dark rum. It's it's not some crazy aged product or anything. Okay, so the Karuba is is equally excellent, and we can find it for a better price. That's why we use it. I think down towards in Maryland, check it out. There are state stores in Maryland where you can find such things. Where were we? That's like around... Uh, we were in Mar Maryland. Yeah, we were. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's like two counties in Maryland that have state stores. New Jersey. This is weird. Like you know? southern Jersey. You can find you it. You can find it. Not northern Jersey. Not and us. New Jersey state law allows supermarkets to have like one or two liquor stores. So you can find it in some supermarkets. Yeah. Well, that's a big bonus. We can't do that in New York. No, we live in backwards New York. Yeah, <laughs> you have to go ranging for. Rawr, rawr, rawr. Okay, so I did two ounces of dark two of Jamaican rum. Some, some things here. And I'm going to do another half ounce of the Tennessee honey, and no, half ounce of the fresh lime juice. Happy New Year from Kate Carden. Hello. Hello. Thank you for joining us this Thursday evening. And At Ray Max Kitchen and Grill. Oh, hey, hey hello. Thank you for us. Okay, and a few dashes of the orange bitters. I want to make sure I keep saying what I'm doing. Oh, this is turn on the bar light. You mean. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that never gets old for us. I probably can't see that that well, but it's fun. I will need bitters, undoubtedly. So, okay. yeah. All right. And we're also saying things like that. Uh, okay. Oh, sorry. Andrew likes the computer screen behind us. Yeah, if you look carefully, it's like that's the, the fireplace show and the show oh, yeah. and infinity. Oh, you also I mean, see you can like kind of see the, the fireplace. You can see the kind of see the fireplace. I'm gonna I'm gonna loosen this up for a second okay. so that everybody can see the fireplace. Ready? Yes. Isn't that great? It's the fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> Our home feels so warm. It is cozier, I tell you. Within, <laughs> within the past week, with single digits, it it felt so much nicer. <laughs> okay, so I did two ounces of Karuba dark mm -hmm. Jamaican rum, a half ounce of Jack Daniels Tennessee honey liqueur, half ounce of fresh lime juice, and a few dashes of Angostura orange, orange bitters. bitters. Should probably be available at your supermarket. Should. Let's see what we think. It's going to be hard to beat the tequila because I love tequila. But... Mm -hmm. right. Get that out of there. Mm -hmm. Get that bad boy. Okay. Let's see. Is this a different color or is it my imagination? It is. It, it is, is a different it color, is darker. isn't it? Oh, yeah. Dark well, because I use dark rum. Duh. Anyway. It's a really good drink. Are you getting the honey? Do okay, we need to up the honey for this one? There's some competition because the base liquor is also it's sweet. Very, it's a strong flavor. I can't tell if I'm getting the honey yet. I think it's a little lost. All right, let's that add base, more honey. That base is a lot. So, yeah, probably another quarter ounce, maybe? Ah. Or, I guess we'll find that <laughs> so later. So much for that, Cap. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I do want to measure it just to make sure. I'm going to add another half. So it seems that both uh, Baltimore, Suburban Baltimore and Buffalo, Suburban Buffalo are 50. Yeah, well, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to have to do too. Yeah, no, it's... I went to the supermarket today. It was warm. I thought it was just the big city that was going to get up to those temperatures because, you know, it's always warmer there. Stirring it because... Because. Shake it again. Uh, I, all I can say is melts the snow off my driveway. Yep. Hello. Another saves, half ounce. Saves my lower back. Yes. I hate shoveling. Well, what is mostly air. 
Snow is, is anyone out there who loves shoveling here. snow? Identify yourself. Please, anybody? <laughs> come to my house. I got plenty for you. <laughs> now I'm getting it. Got it. Yeah. So, got it. if you like decide note, to make there. the dark rum version, you need to use a full ounce of the Tennessee honey liqueur. It is a bit tart. So, if you're like, wow, I like them a little sweeter, well, just pop up the proportions a little, well, you'll get use, there. Use less lime. Use less lime. That's possible, hmm. too. And St. Paul's <laughs> 10. Oh, jeez. Well, you know, well, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Paul yeah. The Twin Cities have, well, don't you guys have a habit trail? So, yes, of course you do. Because it's 10 below. It's Minneapolis that has the habit trail. Doesn't St. Paul have such things, too? I don't know. If it doesn't, Let wow, you guys are missing out, man. I remember I, I I played Minneapolis on tour. Oh, you did. And it was awesome. Like I mean, it was spring, so we didn't need to be. But apparently, yeah, like there's like ways to not be outdoors. Well, like and, in Montreal, where the the half the city's underground for yes. such reasons. Yeah. Somebody was telling me recently at work that he was in, he was up there over the New Year's, and it was something like 25 below. I'm like, why did you go north? Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, Times Square was two <laughs> degrees below. You know, you were insane enough to do that. Yeah. I'm going to check some comments and let's go on with it. Montreal has a... Uh, Montreal has one too. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Covered bridges between buildings. Yeah, they should be. Yeah. Okay, yeah. The St. Paul and Skyways. Oh, okay. You need it. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. People were telling me about You're being out in, in, in that area of the country and you'd be walking around, your face is freezing off. No. Nope. Guy says he ducked into a coffee shop and he's just like, he couldn't get the order out. Uh, yeah, because Who you have to defrost for half an hour, and then you're like, stop blubbering and say, yeah, I'd like a coffee. You Who know? told you that? I'd like a venti, please, you know? It's just crazy. And, and really, <laughs> I spent some time on Long Island in the 80s, and, you know, that flat land next to the water is just as bad as the Great Lakes. It just tears your ear off. Ugh. Absolutely nuts. So let's... let's speaking yeah, of, on that happy note. Speaking of cold things... Let's mix for you. I have some extra. Is everybody getting yeah. the music? Several people chimed in about that. <laughs> if you if you did and whatnot, that's great. If you don't have an account with Spotify, I think it's free. But uh, people are actually checking it out, and we got some good stuff on there. We'll we'll cut some more playlists. Whoever suggested this several episodes Angela. ago, Angela. Oh, Angela yes, did? yes. Oh, Jason did? replied and said Excellent. he thought it was Angela, which was okay. thank you, Angela. That was an amazing idea. It's a good idea. Um, you know, I wouldn't have thought of it. We avoid these problems. Everybody gets to listen. We're good. Yes. You know? I, um, we have no music here, but that's fine. Should I tell them of our secret shame? What secret shame? We tried to do it on Pandora, and neither of us could have figured Pandora out. So, Spotify it was. So, if anyone out no. there is a Pandora expert. Seriously, Pandora, like, there was in. no button that said create a playlist. I, well, I said, you know what? I don't yeah. have time for this crap. Mm. Boom. We're on Spotify. Done. It took me ten minutes. <laughs> it was... So I stupid. Felt really stupid, but well, there's the thing though. They have competition. If they don't work, you go to the competition. Done. <laughs> so I'm actually going to give this a try, and I don't think we need two glasses. No. I think we just need one of these guys. I do want to try it though. Yes. Well. Okay. Give that a whirl. What do we got? Pandora, you can only create channels. Oh. You're not stupid. They're just odd. Oh. I'm glad to know. This is weird. I mean, I'd be okay being stupid because if I don't get it, who cares? I move on to the next. Whatever. This is weird. Oh, yeah? It's not bad weird. It's just weird. It's weird weird? Okay. Yeah. Once again, we've got uh, La Fay, which is probably, it's at least East Coast distributed. Uh, it's interesting in that it, it, this is a very old school steel can with printing. You know, most places they have a print, they have Kinda a paste on a label. There. Distributed. Where does this distribute Product from? of Thailand, uh, but it doesn't say who's distributing it. Uh, like, it really matters. Envasado para Grace Kennedy Foods, Munaki, New Jersey. So this is definitely an East Coast brand. We can find it easily in our markets. Yeah. You may not be able to find the same. Uh, but there's also Goya does the same, and there's a couple other brands. It's great to have a Latin market where you can go in and find those frozen pulps, and you find, like, four <laughs> different brands of them. Just find your local tamarind juice drink. Um, but it's, I like it. I think it's going to make some really interesting cocktails. It's, it's some odd flavor. There's a weird nose in that, but yeah. it's got a nice sweetness to it, and it's got a nice tart to it. That's the kick with tamarind, is that it's, it's a very tart flavor that will actually dry out anything sweet that you're throwing in it, which is good. So let's do something fun with it, shall we? Let's do it. I decided to do something similar to what this young woman is doing, <laughs> and let's 
start with a base. I'm doing oh, something Oh, so you're jimmy. going to make it, this, make the same drink with different bases. I think I will do something like that, yes. Okay. I think so, too. I ended up having to alter my drink, but... So we'll start with two ounces of the bean. Oh, you got to hand me the computer. We're getting comments. Oh, hello, hello. Let's do that. Oh, apparently it's, it's a legume. Oh. We're drinking legumes. Great. So it's a bean. Oh. By the way, for Christmas, I got an instant audience. So in case we do something that's really great, that's a really great like zinger, I can give you a... <laughs> and in case it's really awesome... <laughs> they look like peanuts. Big peanuts. Oh, interesting. They okay. do. Thank they do, you. in fact, look like that. All right. So it's a good observation. And if, if what I do like really lays an egg... favorite thing ever. This is the best gift I ever gave anyone was this thing. Everyone needs the instant I need audience. one too. Seriously. <laughs> so I got uh, two ounces of that. I'm going to give you a good half ounce worth of the lime. I'll give you some sour. Yeah, we all need cartoon soundtracks to our lives. Amen. Please. I want one too. Now let's give us a good half ounce worth of the tamarind. Drink. Oh, <laughs> that just splashed everywhere. Yeah, that's I think life on in the big laptop city. too. Now. Okay. Oh, Doug and Arnie are here. Hi. Hello. Thank you for joining us. I brought out some bur uh, some bitters, is what I did. Some, bur 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 some bitters. There you go. And I think I'm going to use them. This is the, the <laughs> passion fruit bitters from Boy Drinks World. These are, it's a little more of an infusion than a bitters, but they work very well. And, and it and comes it's, with its own dropper. Remember, uh -huh. we were talking about droppers yeah. earlier. <laughs> and you get a good good solid dropper of that. That's several yes. drops. And I'll throw that in. So I've got some passion flavor going in there. Have I ever seen or heard the redneck horn? It's awesome. No. What's that? Hmm. Okay. Interesting. And I'm going to get a glass. Oh, boy. There we go. Pardon me. A little rude. It's sniffly all of a sudden. All right. And let's shake. Mmm. still see that the lights on underneath by the way <laughs> oh that's great we'll never get tired of that we had a request <laughs> and i'm also pouring into a velveteen lounge kitchen glass if your Yay. cocktails do not taste 40 percent better than they do that's because you're not drinking out of a velveteen lounge kitchen glass you can find them in our product store go to our site and it's right there velveteenloungekitchen.com if you take a look and you fight say gee the shipping is kind of high that's because we have to charge for shipping. Hooray. We have cer certain vendors here who are very familiar with the idea that people bulk at shipping. USPS. Yeah. I just say, it's what can expensive. I say? We will do our best for that. If you are anywhere within the tri-state area, I might be able to meet you, and you can save on oh. that shipping. Ray, Max, Kitchen and Grill, you guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Ray. Mm. Appreciate that. Ooh. Wow, that's really full. That's kind of full. <laughs> I stopped the pour. <laughs> Let's give that a try. Now, what did you do? You did bourbon, right? Yeah. I'm too busy focusing on It's this. a bourbon drink. Bourbon, the sour, the tamarind, uh, you know, juice here, which is really, do you call it tam tamarind drink? Juice this drink. Is, this is a sweetened juice. Which means it's not juice. <laughs> and it's not as sweet oh, as it might be you. because the actual juice is a little tart. And then I actually put in <laughs> some Thank of you, the Boy Drinks Roll Passion Fruit. And I think I'm going to put in a second dropper because I'm not really getting it. Yep. Okay, I'm going to borrow. Like cheese food is. Your syrup cheese. paddle? Juice drinks aren't juice. No, I, it's not. Yeah, most juice drinks it's are. It's not juice. Is everybody familiar with the term teeny? That's got a very Does it say what, vague like, relationship with juice. I like when it says what percentage of juice it is. Does it actually say? It's probably about 20. Sometimes it oh, says. That's bad. It doesn't say. I'm familiar with these Goya and, and La Fay things, it's pretty low. <laughs> It'll uh, say like fifteen percent juice. It's like, uh. Yeah, it really kind of should. <laughs> Apparently, it has one percent of your dietary fiber for the day. I wouldn't use this as a fiber supplement myself, <laughs> per se. <laughs> it is a refreshing, wholesome beverage with real tamarind pulp. Okay. Also, try a refreshing <laughs> coconut juice with pulp. Maybe I'll try that next oh, okay. time. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. I'm coconut gonna get with back pulp. To you. Yes. Why not? I want to uh, give that a try, please. Try this. Yeah. Here we go. The cheese stands alone. Is your bar curtain design available on Spoonflower? 
Yes, because I bought that on Spoon Flower. Ah. Uh -huh. It's not my design. This is really good. It mostly tastes like bourbon, but no wonder I like it. Cheese food. Is that what cheese eats? Is mm -hmm. that what you feed the cheese? <laughs> yes, I think so. Cheese gets big, therefore. I have to duck out of the shot for just a second, so okay. pardon me. Oh. Okay. Never mind. Okay, I really had to... Oh, I don't know whether I should say this or not. I, I'm still getting over my cold. I really had to blow my nose. Uh, I'm sorry. And look, I had this thing that for was like not elegant. Ten days. If you're on the East Coast picking up this crap, I'm sorry. That was not elegant. It's, but it's really it's like it's I have this to. nasty, endless, stupid uh, thing that's all congestion uh, and coughing. The coughing is 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 awful. It's really terrible. All the cold medicine in the world doesn't help that, but no. a little NyQuil might. That's good, though. That's quite nice. I yeah. like it. It mainly really, tastes like bourbon to me. But it's in, yeah, the, the, the whiskey is dominating. It's in a very whiskey sour vein. What do you have other notes going on there, yeah. which are nice? And again, I upped the quantity on the bitters by, by 100%. I actually just put a second dropper in, and suddenly I'm getting a little more of that note, yeah. which is nice. Because I think that the passion plays well with the tamarind. And you find a lot of uh, tiki drinks, if they use this sort of thing, and tropicals, will actually do such things. Are Let's you check it using out. the shellback for the next round? Oh, I don't know. Maybe. You might only need to use one dropper. The Latin market. Uh, don't worry about it. I've been discussing gross for two weeks, says Jen. Oh. <laughs> Thank oh. you. I actually I'm feel sorry. fine right now. I just, um, yeah, it just, yeah, it doesn't completely go away. I expect it to be gone in April. Yes. Oh, Jen says, uh, where can I get the tamarind? Yeah, check your local Latin market. Or, actually, I think Luis just pointed out, Asian markets frequently do this because the, yeah, the tamarind is very popular, like, in South Asia. And I know, like, in our local supermarket, yeah, they probably have it, too, because we live in a very multicultural area. Diverse and, area. And our supermarket has a great international we have a aisle, substantial so latin population check they, your supermarket first they typically have the the la Fe and also the goya products but there are like two other brands out there or actually probably a bunch of other brands yeah. out there the one that we go to that is pretty specifically a latin market has all this stuff from peru which is kind of interesting it's great. so you know it. i love having access it's it's, yeah. it's all about that their beer section is all latin american lagers which is pretty fun well they have they have ones that are like victoria like Mexican yes. beers that you can't get at your supermarket. No, but no. we had in Mexico, so I'm like, oh, memories. You know, it's fun. But Victoria is is made by Modelo, mm -hmm. and it's going to taste an awful lot like regular Modelo. Well, because it probably because it probably is. And then of course there is Negro if Modelo. If anyone from Beer Bros is watching, is it all the same? But um... uh, well, I think that's a Beer Bros <laughs> challenge, and if we can get these fellows up here, uh... oh my gosh, that would be so fun. Try Our... like. Negro Modelo, <laughs> Victoria, and Lyon. If we can get Lyon up here, boy, that'd be awesome. Because oh my gosh, you can get Negro Modelo in many parts of Mexico, but Lyon you can only get in Yucatan, and it's a really great beer. Really? It's a really good dark. Yeah, and you can't find that outside of that. I remember yeah. the day I discovered Lyon. I know it was it was uh, more than ten years ago. I know. It was more than fifteen years ago. Yeah, <gasps> I think we're at Chichen Itza. I feel old now, but anyway, it's an it's a really nice dark Munich lager. Made in Mexico. Yes. All those beers are German beers. And the German population actually migrated Keith, to Mexico. Keith, if you're watching. And they started brewing beer. The Negro Modelo Victoria Leon Challenge. I'm just saying. If if and when you ever come to the PAC NW, I have a long list of places to take or send you. I want to. Challenge really accepted, Jen. I I would love that. And if we could shoot there, it might be easier for me to sell it to you. To whom? I'd go in a sec. <laughs> yes, if we had places to shoot. You don't need to convince me. But it looks like a lot of fun. I mean. No, look, that section yeah. of the country has always looked like and a it's good time. The, it's the, well, I haven't been to the frozen north. I've been to Minneapolis. Well, like what, but Alaska? I well, no, I haven't been to Alaska. No. But I haven't been to, like, the Dakotas or Idaho. That kind of thing. That kind of thing, or yeah. the Pacific Northwest, but I think I've been to most of the rest of the country. Well, the, the, where's oh, I'm thinking of where's the coldest place normally in the country? Oh, that is actually Minnesota. International Falls uh, usually post the most insane oh temperatures in the I'll country. I'll go in July. It's like they, they're kind of centered right there where the polar vortex <laughs> comes down and says, ah, I'm gonna sock you in the jaw. 
How big other people live, I don't know. Maybe they uh, maybe they eat coal every morning. Some people good really God. like the cold, though. Well, good for them. They do. I'm not me, but some people really like the cold. I grew up with it, so I can tolerate it, but I do not like. No, I no, but I know people who love it. They would never live anywhere else because they thrive on the cold and they hate summer. <laughs> I go out every... I was going to say no judgment, but then Paul just judged you. Oh. Sorry, I judge you. No, I go out every <laughs> August in New York City where it, it's actually really unbearably hot. Terrible, really terrible, terrible mm. hot. And I soak it up so I can bank it for the winter because single digits, you need something, right? Like a, like a solar panel. Like a solar panel. Would it be nice? Would it be nice if this was actually the case? No, I'm freezing over here. Jeez. No, today's all right. Yeah, today's fine. No, I'm just thinking about last week. It was brutal. Earlier this week it was brutal. Earlier this week it was brutal, and today it was in the fifties. Last week we went to the botanical gardens in the Bronx. Oh my God! And that it was, was so... about five below, and simply <laughs> walking to where we needed to go was oh good grief. Well, it was at night. That was the thing. We yeah. went to the New York botanical gardens Saturday night. It was dark for the there holiday was a lot of train snow. show. There were which mazes. Was awesome. It was very shining. It was awesome. It was great, but. It was like one of those five below days. It was really, really And when you terrible. get off the train, and there is a train stop called Botanical Gardens, so theoretically you're right there, but you have to walk from the station to the actual Botanical Gardens, and I thought I was going to die. And of course, like, we got a bright idea when we were leaving, because it was bar, bar car night, because it was the holiday train show. So as we're leaving, like, let's get some drinks and take them on the train, which was actually a very sound idea. But we were walking from the venue to the train, and in the time that we left the venue and got to the train, our drinks froze. They so. literally got slushy. <laughs> so we didn't have to worry about them getting warm. I had this little because they of, froze. of slush around there. Yeah, I had big gloves on, too. Oh my God. Good grief. It was so fun. My face was starting to freeze off. Yeah, that wasn't fun, but... We had, we had a comment uh, from uh, from Kate Carradine. I guess St. Paul invented pepper and schnapps. Oh, hello. What do you know? It's, it's the Wonder Inch Schnapps liqueur. Now, this comes to us from where? Death's Door. Death's Door, which is... Death's Door Spirits. ...in Wisconsin, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so there we go. So, Wisconsin is actually backing up right here with the Wonder Mint. And again, this is... This actually is a very good peppermint uh, liqueur. Yeah. It's it's a good shot if you want to do is shots. Is it peppermint or is it just mint? Well, actually, they call it mint. Mint. There's peppermint, almond, rose water, and wormwood. Yes. Wormwood. Because mm, okay. I'm not a huge fan of peppermint, yeah. and I like that. So. It's also a pretty good mixer. We've used it in several things. Mm -hmm. So bear that in mind. We got you covered on the schnapps. Now we need to mix other things. You were going to make another one. Yes, I was. Of what you just did. So why didn't I do that? I don't know. Let's remedy that. <laughs> Our dinner is waiting for us in the Instant Pot. Um, so if we seem a little loopy, we come by it naturally because we haven't eaten. Did anybody else get an Instant Pot for Christmas? I That's did. <laughs> I, yeah, I love it. I tell you, all you cooks out there who are like, gee, that sounds interesting, check it out. It's because you can completely screw up and the Instant Pot has your back. I need a strainer. Do we have one that's kind of kicking around or no? Nope. You want to use mine? Wait. I oh, you right. do. Ah. Okay. There you go. Smart guy actually did that. Okay, so we're actually going to do something very similar oh, wait. to what we did before. We're getting comments. You want to hand me the sure. laptop again? Mm -hmm. Oh, Stacy says, come Tiki here in Phoenix. In Phoenix? I'm there in five minutes. Thank I... you. Please. It's a long story, which I'll tell you in person, but I could find excuses to come to Phoenix with not much... We, we could have like a real official reason to come to Phoenix. Mm -hmm. I, I could. I could have an official reason and it to come would be, to Phoenix. It wouldn't exactly be a mission of mercy, but it would be a mission of family. And the fact is, we've had very good times in Phoenix. It would yes. be a mission of family, and I could probably work in some um, tiki time. Among other things, you can get in and out in Phoenix. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> she does not eat burgers normally, but you know something? Hey, we got Carl's Jr. on the uh, uh, East Coast recently. It's very rare that I eat a burger, but in and out. Man, those fries. I tell you. 
let's get moving. Yeah, now, I, I decided that the second thing I would do with this thing was to do it with some clear rum. And I happen to have some shellback silver rum that came to us from Paula and Bernie. If you're watching. Hi, Paula and Bernie. Hello. If you're watching, or if you watch later. Hi, if Paula you watch on the Bernie. playback, hello. <laughs> and I'm going to give this a good two ounces worth of this. The shellback was recommended by Bernie. He said it's actually a really good silver rum, and he is correct. He is correct. And this is coming to us from Barbados. Okay. Imported and bottled by Grand Antilles Cane Spirits, Modesto, California. Well, if you can find this, good stuff. If you can't, it's probably pretty hard. Well, but he's but it's a good, in, it's a good rum. they're in Connecticut and yep. they found it, so. You know, we may be talking to the locals here, but we have a lot of locals we're talking to, so that's, that's good. Right. Now let's throw in a good half ounce worth of this lime. Make sure you throw in a good half ounce. You wouldn't want to throw in a bad half ounce. A bad half ounce will whoop up your drink. <laughs> Next, let's go in a good solid half ounce worth of this tamarind juice drink. Mm -mm -mm. Sounds good. I might want to modify that. We'll see what happens. I like the there. tamarind. It's a weird flavor, but I enjoy it. I'm going to try this because I want to see where this is going. Okay. Since we have a less dominant flavor on the base. I feel like I'm missing these. I see the comments up there, but then they're not showing up here. If I'm not replying to your comments, I'm sorry. This is weird. Oh, wait. Oh, there's an arrow. Oh, look at that. Oh, no, I missed a whole conversation about Phoenix. Oh, hello. Let's check that out. I added another quarter ounce worth of the tamarind drink. Now, what I was going to do with this, uh, I was thinking about what to do with the rum version of this, and I kind of thought I wanted to do, oh yes. Speaking of Phoenix. Color changing, yes. The, I'm sorry, but Ow. just speaking of, I'm, I'm looking at these comments, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really bad about doing two things at once apparently, but, um, I could use a return trip to Contiki in Tucson. Contiki, in our experience, it's one of our first real tiki joints, right? Yes. And when we first encountered it, I thought, it's a cool little joint. The drinks are okay. The food is pretty mediocre. And in our time, the food got a lot better, and the drinks got a lot better. Oh. And frankly, sort of the decor. I mean, it, just, it, it was a trifecta. It's a really cool place. Tucson, among other, for years, I think, has been what we would call a joke. And, but every time I'm there, I'm like, this is a cool little town. I don't town. think Tucson's a joke, do you? Tucson has been, has been a joke for years. Has it? Yeah. I don't, I don't get it. Well, think of Romy and Michelle's uh, high school reunion. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a joke in there. Okay. And, and Hollywood would do that. Yeah, yeah, ha, 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 ha. But you know something? There's a lot going for Tucson. You know? Stacy says, for serious, come out. I, Stacy, I'm sure I will be there before you know it. Probably. I will probably need to take care of some business, but... Um, I miss it. Like, oh boy, here we go. Um, I'm going to hand this back to you. Yep. <sighs> so many issues. But yeah, no, I have family in Chandler and um, will doubtless need to be there. But, but I've always loved it. I love the desert. When I was a kid, my grandmother and my aunt lived in Phoenix. My yeah. grandmother lived Phoenix. in Scottsdale, and my aunt lived in Phoenix, but they were very close to each other, and I loved it. It was I love the desert, I love the climate, I love everything about it. So it's been a while since I've been out there. 2012 was the last time I was there, and I remember we went to Drift, and that closed, and Trader Vic's, and that closed. Contiki's still there. <laughs> oh, Hold on, knock on wood, but um. Yeah, no, I, I would love to go back out there, so I can't wait, and I will let you know, so. <laughs> what else am I doing here? I've got I don't know. in my hands. I haven't had my dinner yet. I don't know what you're doing, but whatever. Hey, you're not schnocker yet. Blur yeah. flower extract. We got this stuff, actually. This <gasps> yes. is the magical color change. This features, the, what, the pea flower blue? Yes. So I'm going to give a good yeah. dropper worth. This stuff there. is really fun. You want to turn something blue, naturally? I went for the clear rum to see if I can make this look fun. So this is more or less the same drink, but it's going to have a color change component. And let's check that out. You know, I don't have any ice in here. <laughs> Oops. Gonna be kind of warm. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh look at all the drinks. 
mics lined up behind me. Working fast. I didn't fast. know that until I looked behind me. Working fast, folks. <laughs> Just catch yourself before you wreck we'll yourself. We'll see if Paul gets to work on time tomorrow. Oh, yeah, go to work tomorrow. Yep. You gotta actually show up in the city. Oh, look at you, show tending. I'm not throwing it over my you shoulder, am I? You're not going to juggle that, are you? No, that would be a mess. <laughs> oh, you've got a you've got two cherry. Look at that. I feel like such an underachiever. My drink didn't have garnish. I threw some cherries up there, and I've got them. Now, interestingly enough, this didn't exactly turn blue, but it kind of turned. Light violet, maybe gray. Pink. Pink. Oh, maybe it's a pink drink. Hello. It's slightly pink. It's not blue. What do we got? All right, let's try this. Actually, that's pretty balanced. Yeah. Oh, that's really good. I like oh, that. Yeah. yeah. So again, base is two ounces with the light rum. I happen to use the shellback silver. Then we put in a half ounce with the lime. We put a half ounce with the tamarind drink. Cameron juice drink. And then I threw in a good solid dropper worth of the blur. Now, if you have no idea what we're talking about, this actually now, tastes good. But... That it's a line. Yeah, this actually, this does do fun ch color changing things when you put a little more in. Shake, strain, add two cherries on your skewer, and away you go. Big fun. If you plan ahead. Like well, if you do that sort of thing, you know. But I put a bunch right. of stuff behind this to you. Should I? Yes, you should. Should I do it? Yes, it's time. All right. We both made all the drinks we planned, but I brought the bar guide. Oh, which the if bar you've guide. seen some of our past <laughs> live broadcasts, is interesting. You're familiar <laughs> with. Um, it's a bar guide from I think 1950, but let's check the date. Oh, I don't see the blue. Yeah, it's kind of. Yeah, it didn't come out blue. I could add a little bit more of um, it, too. True. 1950. Maybe I'll do that. The first person who calls out a number, we will make a drink from that page if we have the ingredients. If we don't, you can choose another number. Oh, boy. I feel like this isn't going to go anywhere good, but it seemed like a great idea earlier today. Oh, who's calling out? Who's calling out? 60. Oh, wait. No, no. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No. I got a lot. Okay, you got to go up. No, yeah. the, the reads actually nailed it. 174. Do we have 174? 174. Are there 174 pages in this book? No. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, but Larice, you, um. Next? Your grandfather. Yeah. Next is uh, Jason at 17. 17. Larice, we'll catch you next Does time. this actually get more pink when I added more blue? 17. Still good. 17 doesn't have any recipes. It's whiskeys and their uses. <laughs> Next, 66. 66, all right. From Cardin. 66. All right, that has the orange bloom. The orange we blossom. We can do that. Yeah. We can do that too. Paradise, we, I think we could do that. We could do that too. And the Parisian. Oh my gosh, uh, a page on which we could do I everything. Think, every drink. We got Cussie. Orange Bloom? I think Orange Bloom. You're not sure about Although it involves Parisian? math. The Parisian? Oh, that sounds awful. Okay, forget that. Uh, the Bloom, let's see. The yeah, By the that. way, the one I said sounded awful has. Oh, 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 okay. I misjudged that one. Never mind. We can do that one. What do you think? That's fine. Okay. Parisian. So, Cassi, the uh, dry vermouth, and the gin. Okay. Yes. Do you have gin behind you? Yes. Okay. The Cassi should be right here. So, this calls for, it's a 1-1-1. This book has parts. It doesn't have ounces. I think you want to modify that. Yeah, but it, but it has the, the ingredients and parts. So, it's one part creme de Cassi. One part French vermouth, which Paul needs to go retrieve from the refrigerator, and one part gin. Be right back. We're probably going to do more gin. Yes. And we're going to do Bootlegger 21 gin because we love them from Prohibition Distillery. Oh boy, I'm looking at this creme de cassis. That looks really old. 
this drink might turn out a little bit weird. But anyway, this is the Parisian. <laughs> I have been to Paris. It's been a long time. We'll see if this reminds me of it. Actually, you've been to Paris too. I have. Twice. All right. Are we going to do the one, one, one? I would say modify that to what you think. <laughs> I don't think this. I don't think this. I have anyway. no more shakers. I guess my job's not done. No. No, it's not his fault. We need more shakers. Yeah, yeah. Come on, get up there. We clearly need to buy more shakers. Uh, Time for another trip to the Salvation Army. Woohoo! <laughs> Apparently so. I know. Well, hand me all well, the shakers that are. This is done too. Need work. Done too. Get the hell there. Sorry. Help me out here. All right, I'm. I'm trying. <laughs> Help me out here, will you? <laughs> I'm doing my Please. best. All right. So anyway. We have all of our ingredients lined up. I'm just waiting for Paul to come back with a clean shaker. Um, anyway, I will check on some comments. Pardon me. In the meantime, so, oh, page 60. All right, well, you know what? We'll probably do this again this weekend. I love calling out pages and, and letting people choose because it's hilarious. <laughs> Anyway, um, Paul's in the kitchen washing dishes. I wish I had the confidence to take the phone off of the tripod and show you this because he's just washing dishes like the wind. But anyway, so how's everyone's week been? <laughs> I think I started to say earlier, our week has been weird. It was freezing like sub-zero freezing at the beginning of this week and today it's in the 50s so um yeah who knows and youtube gave me a little arrow so parisian <laughs> no we have not alphabetized our liquor cabinet i kind of wish we had but um no it's a complete mess and we just put things wherever they fit and it's always a, a real challenge oh look i got a clean shaker a real challenge when something like this comes up okay do we have that i'm positive we do all right here we go the parisian okay <clears throat> and i need i am not going to do their proportions because i think that will be awful i need to do two ounces of gin in this case, bootlegger 21 gin from Prohibition Distillery. And I forgot what else goes in here, actually. Oh, creme de cassis. Oh, you've helpfully set it out for me. Cassis. Creme de cassis. Lime, right? No, no lime. Hmm. All right. Oh, no, vermouth. You have your base, right. your base, your vermouth, and your cassis. Yes. And okay. this call for one one one. I am not doing yeah, that's, that. Yeah, that's that's a bad idea. Why do Ugh, drink recipes do that? Horrible. It's easy on the guy who's making the drinks. A hangover in the making. But it's so I'm going the to balance do, is wrong. Right. I'm going to do a half ounce of that sounds about right. Mm -hmm. The dry vermouth and a half ounce of the creme de cassis, which no, that's a lot smarter. Is is this creme de cassis even still viable? Of course, it's really old. It's not that old. It's kind of old. It's not that old. What does this go? Oh, this goes to this. Go through there. Okay. Yes. So let's shake it up. And get delirious. We're going to have so many drinks left after this. Come on. If you are in our general area and you would like a drink, come over. I'm not joking. You got a few. A few of you actually know where we live. There's a drink with your name on it. So, let's shake this up and see what we think. <laughs> this is a martini variation because it has the gin and the dry vermouth and it has some creme cassis, which is going to get a little weird, but I need the glass. Yes. Okay, here we go. Glass where we've got so far. All right. Ooh. Nice color. Yeah. yeah. All right. Interesting but true. It's all right. It's all right. It's like a 
sweet martini. I wouldn't send it back. But I think if we went with the original proportions of the terrible. drink, it would be god awful. It would be terrible. Oh, there are a lot of drinks Ugh. like that in the classic books. And I think these are just sort of Prohibition era drinks where people said, I've got booze, I don't care. <laughs> I don't want to taste it. It doesn't matter. I have booze, you know? I don't want to taste and it. And the actual base liquor is awful. Yeah. So, but this, if you've got a good base, in this case, you had two ounces? Two ounces of gin. Two half half. Yeah. I'm getting the gin very strongly, and I'm getting some sweet and some mm -hmm. and uh, some vermouth out of that. This is really not bad. I don't know what's Parisian about it, but... Oh, for God's sake, that's Nothing. PR. Somebody Nothing. just <laughs> threw a name out there. It's like Russian Zero. dressing. What does that have to do with Vladivostok? Nothing. Nothing. But, it's yeah. PR. It's all right. I didn't pour it all out. But oh, well, then there's a bonus bit, isn't there? There you go. Okay. Done. Yeah, it's... I declare it not bad. That's not exactly a ringing recommendation. <laughs> I'm not sure I would make it for myself if I was here. And I thought, hmm, I want a drink. I'm not sure that's one I would make. But but it is absolutely certain that if you ever visit the lounge and you decide, hey, I want that drink you made in that episode that one time, let us know what it is. The Parisian. I hope we have all the ingredients right. and we'd be glad to make it for you. We probably will. We would. That's yeah. not stuff we keep on hand. Wait, most of these things we got. Mm. Yeah, we typically have Cassie. I like Cassie. I think it's a really great thing in certain specific things. In, in something like a Royal Occur, hey, that's a great thing to do. Mm -hmm. So, in this case, it's, it's really not a bad drink. And if you find something that you think, yeah, I'd love to have that, we'll try it out on you. The Bar Guide, published by True the Men's Magazine. It was a cartoons by VIP. I love that. Do you that. want to make something? Twisting. Okay, I can I can make something. Except he he moved the other way from where I twisted. But I guess it's know. kind of fake. <laughs> okay, people, once again, name some numbers. Call out, call out a page. Uh, what am I doing? Okay, Patrick says forty-five. Forty-five. The man actually claims 45. it. Forty-five. Come on, forty-five. Okay. Here we have. There's something called appendicitis. That's the first one on the page. Mmm, appendicitis. Oh, that calls for two whole eggs. Oh, wow. I'm not doing that. Sorry. <laughs> something called appetizer, which has one part Dubonnet and one part gin. We got that. We could do that? I don't think it would be very good. But he called out 45. Well, he, yeah, but we get to choose. So it also has Argentina, Let's see. which has the dry vermouth, mm -hmm. which is still out here. I think. Oh, that sounds pretty interesting. Okay. Yeah. And then Astoria, which is actually it's called for teaspoons, which is weird. I could fake that. That's okay. That's a martini. What? Aren't it's a kidding? really, really wet martini. The Astoria. With different. Oh, the Astoria. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Argentina looks interesting. You could do the Argentina. All but right. We need a teaspoon to be legit. Okay, gente Argentina, shall There's we? There's something called the Argentina, which calls for, are you ready? Please. No, I'm waiting for you to start mixing. Oh, let's do it. This is, oh wow, this is a wine drink. A wine drink? What is it got in there? It's, it's got all these like liqueurs, but it has the French. It's got the French, which I already have back here. But it doesn't have any like, I need a shaker. He man liquor. Well, oh, well, we need more shakers. <laughs> it's become painfully obvious to me. Um, yes. So anyway, the Argentina, which Paul will shortly be making, calls for one ounce French vermouth, which is also dry vermouth, half teaspoon Cointreau. The teaspoons are a little weird. I'm not sure you're going to be able to taste that. Half teaspoon Benedictine, two drops Angostura bitters, one dash orange bitters. Okay, wait. Two drops Angostura bitters, but one dash orange bitter. Wow. Yeah. That's specific. Look, folks, here's the oh, kicker. We need orange juice. A half teaspoon of orange. Oh, no, this calls for gin, too. I'm sorry. An yeah. ounce of gin. Okay. Well, folks, here's the kicker with these vintage books. When they give you these cockamamie directions, <laughs> adjust accordingly. 
if it looks like drops and dashes and you're like, how can I do that? Do what it says. A Magnesterol bottle gives you a dash. It doesn't give you a drop. So it was like dashes so and drops. Bumpy. No, just do no, what it says. The, the Angostura bitters and the orange bitters are both Angostura, and they're going to give you the same pour. Yes, they are. So I'm going to do that. Yes. And we do orange juice as well. It needs a half teaspoon of orange juice. I personally would not be able to taste that, but... That is really insane, I'm sure but I'm going to do it. I'm super tasters would. We have at least one friend who's a super taster. And if we left out the half teaspoon of orange juice, he'd be like, hmm, the orange juice is missing. So Paul's getting a half teaspoon of orange juice. Um, I'm not a super taster and neither is Paul. And I'm okay with that because I think my life would be very complicated if I could taste every single ounce of everything in every drink. That would be, I don't know. I'm happy to be dumb and <laughs> You're not ignorant dumb. of the, the flavors. Ignorant of these nuances of flavor that nobody else can taste, not a problem. Yeah. Okay, I gotta so tell you, you it's, it's like having perfect pitch. Who cares? Okay, um, so we need to do perfect what? Perfect pitch would be torture, I think. No, it's terrible. Okay, an ounce of dry vermouth. Okay. AKA French vermouth. I have that? Yes. Okay. A full ounce. I've got that too. Is everybody still hearing audio, by the way, on the playlist? There's like two hours there. You should. Mm. I put like 132 songs on there. As Andrew okay. said, you should be good. Mm. Okay. Hopefully. Okay. So, Dry. you ready? Yep. Half teaspoon Cointreau. We don't have Cointreau, but we have Grand Marnier, so guess what? I'm using Marnier. The, these liqueurs Half are teaspoon. functionally what are equivalent. The I'm doing this. There you go. That's a half teaspoon. That's not a half teaspoon. That's a half teaspoon. That was a teaspoon. That's a half teaspoon. That's a half teaspoon. That's a half teaspoon. I'm telling you. All right, the Argentina has already gone south. Half teaspoon. So was Argentina itself. Benedictine. Oh, we got that. <sighs> it's right here. We have measuring spoons. Yeah. Really do. Somebody couldn't be bothered. <laughs> no, the real problem is getting the topper off the Benedictine. Ugh. Oh my gosh. These sugary liqueurs. Ugh. When you go to take. The... Oh god. Half teaspoon. That's oh, it. that was a teaspoon. That's it. That's, That's it. a teaspoon. No. Half. Half teaspoon. Half. Two drops Angostura bitters. I feel like you should use more because you used more of the liqueurs. Four drops. Right. Three. There you go. Dash orange bitters. Now we're still using. Oh, there they we were over here. Yeah. We're still using Angostura product. This is orange Angostura. Easily Angostura available didn't in your have supermarket. an orange bitters until about five years ago. No, easily available in your supermarket. Yes, Probably. that's a good thing. Probably. And orange bitters are part of your arsenal. That should be the basics. The basics. Our English is excellent. An ounce of gin. Okay. Now I happen to have a gin over here. Oh boy, this. Okay. I was looking at a recipe in this book earlier and had a very, very politically incorrect. Um, We're not going to tell you. No. But this one says, why Perona stays in office and why Mrs. P stays there with him. I don't feel like that's politically incorrect. And I feel like it's Evita. It's theater-esque. So. It's theater-esque hey. and also a pretty cheap Evita. sexual reference. Okay, so. so. Like she would stay with him for this crazy drink. Anyway. I'm looking at it. I don't think she would. <laughs> I'll give you some ice, please. All right. Oh boy, there's no ice. <laughs> Look at that. Hey, what you got? You mixed this up is here. going to be a semi cold drink. I think this will take a small cocktail glass. Okay. <laughs> Glad I bought ice today. No, we have a bunch of ice. <laughs> All right. Small cocktails, please. All right, we're cold. Right here. Know. 
Eva Braun we'll may out. approve, and she may say, what the hell are you talking about? Hmm. Don't cry for her, Argentina. I like the color. The color is quite nice. The aroma is quite nice. Let's see. That's quite all right, if you ask me. <laughs> I wouldn't send this back. No. No, it's um, it's a little sweet for my taste. I would add a squeeze of lime, <laughs> but um, but it's pretty okay. Thank you, Patrick, <laughs> for choosing page forty-five because that wasn't bad. Some of the drinks in that book are bad, but I highly recommend picking it up if you see it in the thrift store because. The cartoons alone are worth it. Mm. Bar Guide. It's just called Bar Guide. Vip is brilliant. I, I, I grew up on Vip cartoons. Virgil Parch. So funny. He's absolutely amazing. And he's actually related to yes. Harry Parch, the musician, which is really strange. Who is that? The musician. Look him up. I don't know. Come on. You know, just, you know, no, you, you share it. Man. Everyone's got Wikipedia. You know? The people. Like, so, like George would say, the people. The people. You know, yes. you can look these things George, up. George and Dog would say the people. Look up VIP, you'll find a lot of fun stuff. Yes. And Harry Parch is was a pretty crazy cat who, who come up with some pretty interesting material, I gotta say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm slowing down because it's been a long day, folks. And we haven't but, had our dinner. But uh, anyway. No, no food. But here's, here's to booze. Here's a good loss. Was it, was the toast Homer Simpson? Here's to alcohol, the cause of, and the solution to all of life's problems. <laughs> Please. <laughs> this is not bad at all. If you request this, I would make it for you. If you're still here, visit our friends Zing Cat and Larissa's Kitchen, Kitchen on YouTube. Oh, and Primo. Yes. Yes, Primo yes. is putting up a lot yes, of videos these days. Absolutely. You got so, it. Um, yeah, his channel is awesome too. So, um, There's all sorts of fun stuff. Larissa's Kitchen, Zing Cat. X I N G C O T. Yes, Larissa will give you all sorts of fun food all the time. Uh, and Zincat will give you uh, both three ingredient food. recipes, yeah, but really also self esteem. And yeah, I know it's, it's a great way. If you're feeling week. down, just find George's self esteem cat. Yes, it's a great way to get through the week. So, um... Especially a brutal week in you know, the Northeast <laughs> when this junk is getting you down. I can't wait to see what happens next. Plague of Locusts. Meat rain in the sky? I don't know. Meat, organs, frogs, I don't know. I know. Strange things rain from the sky from time to time. Craziness. That's very true. But. Our dinner's been sitting in the instant all right, pot let's for go like get an it. hour. So we're going to test the keep warm function. The instant pot is pretty awesome so far. I, I love the instant pot? My mom! Thank you, mom! That was a Christmas gift for my mom, and it's I've used it a lot so far. So. We've had several things that have all been good. Make it's a slow the cooker. Day. It's a fast cooker. It's a brazer. I'm mainly using the pressure cooking setting, but yeah. It's good. It's you can make good. popcorn in this thing, apparently. I heard that today. You can make popcorn. What? What, what? But so, anyway, yeah. um, we'll try it out. We'll try it out. So. It's a rice cooker. <laughs> yeah. You know, all sorts of things. You can make yogurt in it. Oh, hello. I That's the final frontier. Yeah. Everyone says that to make yogurt, you need, I don't know. Blah, blah, blah. We're going to ferment milk and see what happens. But we use a, a lot of yogurt here, so I'm all about that. Please. So anyway. Um, These should all be in your arsenal. Everything we showed to you tonight, <laughs> if you have any questions, send us a text. We'll tell you all about we'll it. We'll put all these recipes below. Maybe not immediately because we need to eat, but by tomorrow for sure. And what else? Tuesday, no, Monday. We'll have a good mocktail Monday for you. Oh, yes. Some new juice today. Oh, yes. And um, Tuesday, I think Cousin Glendora might be dropping by. So. <laughs> Who knows what she's been up to? Her latest bad day, I guess. And lots of wine. And lots of wine, but um, who, who can't get behind that? So That's anyway, 
Thank you for joining us. Have a fabulous weekend, and we'll see you on Monday for Mocktail Monday. Monday indeed. <laughs> Bye. Everybody, keep warm or cold, depending on where you are. Exactly. It's going to be an interesting weekend, and it's going to be colder next week. Ah. <laughs> so let's actually do that. Bye-bye. <laughs>